Something like a brightly coloured rat scuttles by your feet. It stops and looks up at you, two eyeballs on stalks. Naked and hardly in sockets. Swiveling up and down, side to side, and staring at you from several different directions at once. It's absolutely stunning. A ribbed and mottled green tail, red and green peacock-eyed paddles at the front, and a vibrant blue head. Its eyes, moving all the time, give a comical look as if it were a cartoon animal. For a second, I think we're extras in a Pixar movie. This brilliant distraction is a peacock mantis shrimp, colour-coordinated and walking the runway of the seabed. Not only is this creature the height of fashion, but it's a great looker, too, in the sense of having probably the most sophisticated and weirdest eyes of the animal kingdom. These are compound eyes, common in insects and the like, and made from hundreds of tiny lenses, which you can just make out with your own naked eye. But that's the only familiar thing about them, as constantly swiveling and rotating, three vertical black dots look at you from inside the eyeball. These dots are pupils, or something like them, and all three are linked and move together. Then there's a band around the equator of the eye that looks as if someone has scratched fine parallel lines on its surface. This seems to be like a scanning machine sensor, as it moves up and down, taking in the detail of the world, line by line. Not only that, but research has shown that mantis shrimps have the potential to perceive many more nuances of colour than we can, with up to 16 different colour receptors against R3. It seems that they can detect six kinds of ultraviolet too, not to mention various kinds of polarisation, and their visual range extends further into both the red and the blue than ours. No one seems to know why they need such visual acrobatics. But of course, it has got to be something to do with the two main drivers in all creatures. Food and sex. Maybe that's why they're so intricately coloured. It allows them to be exceedingly precise in how they market themselves to their fellow crustaceans. I doubt whether all this intelligence gathering was intended to be comical but I can't help thinking that they look like disapproving librarians twitching over reading glasses and waiting for you to cough up your fine for returning your books late. Luckily, because our air is getting low, the peacock decides it's time to go. And just as you're beginning to feel slightly embarrassed by its attention, the super arthropod blasts off from the seabed and jets towards the safety of its burrow. These shrimps seem both curious and cautious about us, trying to guess whether we mean them any harm. We were never meant to meet like this, of course, two creatures from very different backgrounds. Yet such brief encounters linger with us the longest.